In order to become the healthiest, most capable, and most athletic version of yourself, you want to maximize your biological power. I recently made a short form video briefly going over biological power, and a lot of you in the comments want to see a complete video on it. Because I'm the number one fitness influencer in the world and I want to make fitness great again, in this video I'll be going over biological power, what it is, and how to improve it. Before I get into the biological power video, because I know how hard it is to train like an athlete and train for fitness because of so many people giving trash advice based purely on vanity, I want to offer you the most incredible free gift ever. If you sign up for a free trial of my Aesthetic Athlete Academy, not only do you get to try out the best community in the world, but you get access to free athletic bodybuilding workouts and you get a free consultation call with me. Be sure to click the link in the description to claim your free gifts. First, you may be wondering, what is biological power? Biological power is actually super simple. It's essentially your body's ability to produce force. Think of biological power as an engine that is capable of producing horsepower. This horsepower is what your body does to do everything like walking, running, and being explosive. When you increase the amount of horsepower your body's able to generate, you then have more energy to do all of these different activities. You're not only able to do these activities faster, but you're able to do them for longer periods of time without fatiguing. The greater your biological power, the greater your work capacity is. And in order to improve biological power, there are four systems you need to develop. These systems are the hormonal system, metabolic system, neuromuscular system, and cardiovascular system. If any of these four systems aren't developed properly, your performance and your capacity will suffer. For example, it does very little for you to have tremendous neuromuscular development if you don't have the cardiovascular, hormonal, and metabolic systems necessary to support the amount of power your muscles are able to generate. A really great example to see the importance of developing all the energy systems is someone who has a terrible cardiovascular system. Let's just say Billy is an MMA fighter and he's super explosive. He's got great neuromuscular development, pretty good hormonal system, and his anaerobic systems are highly developed. But his cardiovascular system isn't great and his aerobic system isn't well developed. He may be an absolute beast for the first minute of a fight and is able to produce a lot of force, but he gasses out super fast. I think we all know of a fighter like Billy who is super explosive but has terrible cardio. In my opinion, power doesn't mean anything if you aren't able to sustain this power for a long period of time. And in this case, Billy's ability to throw hard punches doesn't really matter if he's unable to do this for the entire length of a fight. The opposite scenario of this is likely possible. Let's just say Bilal has an incredible gas tank, but his anaerobic systems and his neuromuscular system isn't well developed. Although he'd be able to put on a high pace, he wouldn't be able to produce enough force to really give his opponent any problems. I hope these scenarios show you the importance of making sure that all four energy systems are well developed. Now you're probably wondering, how do I develop these energy systems? And that's a good ass question, and I'll go over briefly how to develop all these energy systems, but I may need to make separate videos for all of them because each system is complex in its own ways. The first system I'll start off with is the hormonal system. When it comes to the hormonal system, you can think of it really simply as testosterone and cortisol. Testosterone is important for building muscle, losing fat, having high energy levels, and all that good stuff. While cortisol is pretty much the opposite of testosterone and it's its arch nemesis. So in order to maximize the hormonal system, we want to maximize testosterone and keep cortisol down. I've actually made an entire video on this, but I'll go over some of the key points. First, you want to make sure you're doing the proper form of exercise and avoiding overtraining. And the two best forms of exercise to increase testosterone are going to be weightlifting and high intensity interval training. These two forms of exercise are going to give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to increasing testosterone. But you also want to make sure like any other form of exercise, you don't overdo it. Exercise is essentially just stress on the body, which is a good thing because our body adapts. But when we overdo the stress, then that leads to overtraining and that's when the body breaks down. A great way to prevent overtraining is to prioritize recovery and make sure that you listen to your body. The next way to increase testosterone and keep cortisol down is living a great lifestyle. And the best way is to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Make sure you're sleeping seven to nine hours per night. The amount your testosterone decreases when you're deficient on sleep is actually pretty ridiculous, so make sure you're getting enough sleep per night. Doing the little things like avoiding blue light exposure at least two hours before bed, making sure your room is the proper temperature, and sleeping in a dark room go a long way. You also want to make sure you're getting enough sun exposure. Sun exposure is crucial for your hormonal system, so make sure that you're getting some sun exposure. I would aim for about 15 to 30 minutes per day, even if it's cloudy outside. And the last way to improve your hormonal system slash testosterone is your diet, and that's probably the best way to improve it. As I mentioned before, I went way more in depth on diet in this video, 
But a super dumbed down version of what I said is make sure that you're eating lots of whole foods and try and avoid processed foods and sugar. This will make sure your testosterone is high and your cortisol is down. And also try your best to manage stress because stress increases cortisol. I know it can be hard sometimes because of external circumstances that you're not in control of, but doing things like meditating and journaling can be super helpful. The next system is the neuromuscular system, which obviously consists of the nervous system and the muscular system. The function of the muscular system is to create movement, but the muscles are only the hardware. The software, which is the nervous system, is what actually activates these muscle fibers. And neural adaptations lead to strength and power gains. In order to improve the neuromuscular system, first we want to make sure that we have a decent amount of muscle mass. Increased cross-sectional area of muscles will lead to greater capacity for strength and power. You obviously don't want to be a huge bodybuilder, but you do want to build a solid amount of muscle mass. And if you're playing a sport, you might want to be a little bit more mindful of this because of weight classes and also the ideal size for your sport. And of course, you want to make sure that you're pretty strong as well. If you're someone who's regularly weightlifting, which you probably are if you watch my channel, you'll have a pretty decent neuromuscular system. But we want to make sure you have a great neuromuscular system. And if you're lifting weights only, you may have great low speed strength, but not high speed strength. So if you don't have great high speed strength, you want to incorporate some sort of power training block or some sort of power training workouts that improves your ability to generate force quickly. I typically recommend power training for people who have a good level of general strength already. If you don't have a great level of general strength, you probably want to do a strength block or continue weightlifting the way you are. For a strength block, you want to train for strength for four to eight weeks where you do low reps, high rest time on your fundamental lifts. Once you get a good base of strength, you'll benefit a lot from power training. A great way for beginners to do this is to just add plyometrics at the beginning of your workout and slightly lower the overall volume of your workouts because plyometrics can be quite taxing. For more intermediate to advanced lifters, you probably wanna do a power block so you get enough volume and intensity to make serious adaptations. If you're lifting for hypertrophy, you probably wanna lift three to five times per week. If you're a little bit more advanced, maybe six. And if you wanna do a strength and power block, you wanna train two to three times per week. The reason why the frequency is much lower is because both of these training styles are quite taxing on your nervous system, so you need a little bit more recovery. Again, it will take me hours to go over each of these training styles and how to develop bit in depth, but I do plan on making separate videos in the future. The next system is the metabolic system. The metabolic system refers to your body's energy systems that produce and manage ATP, the primary energy source for muscle contractions. And there are three main metabolic systems. These systems are the aerobic system, anaerobic lactic, and anaerobic alactic systems. First, I'll start off with the aerobic system. This energy system doesn't produce ATP fast and has a low capacity for power, but it doesn't fatigue quickly and produces a lot of ATP. The aerobic system is the primary energy system used for long duration, low intensity activities. Think of walking, running, stuff like that. When comparing all three energy systems, the aerobic system is the most adaptable and it's the most adaptable by a long shot. In order to improve your aerobic system, there are a ton of different methods, but think low intensity, long duration stuff. My favorite way to improve my aerobic system is to walk or do a long, slow run for 60 to 90 minutes. The unfortunate thing about the aerobic system is it does require a high frequency to make serious changes. I would say a good number to shoot for is three days of aerobic training per week. But if you're someone who really wants to lock in on aerobic training, I would do up to five times per week if you're not playing a sport along with these aerobic sessions. Now onto the anaerobic systems. The anaerobic systems are capable of producing tremendous energy because they don't rely on oxygen and use few chemical reactions to produce ATP. But it does come with a huge con because they can only produce energy for a relatively short amount of time before fatiguing. The first anaerobic system is the anaerobic lactic system. This system produces uses APT at a much faster rate than aerobic system, but cannot sustain it for more than a minute of high intensity work. The anaerobic lactic system is primarily used for high intensity activities that last from 30 seconds to two minutes. The anaerobic lactic system can produce a high amount of power, but it doesn't have as much capacity as the aerobic system. Examples when the anaerobic lactic system is the primary energy system are a 400 meter sprint or squats that are a little bit higher reps, like 10 to 15 reps. And the last energy system is the anaerobic alactic system. And this energy system is super freaking explosive. This energy system is able to produce a higher level of power than the other two systems, but it fatigues very quickly. This system is used for short explosive movements like a heavy bench press, shorter duration sprints, jumping, etc. In order to develop the anaerobic systems, you want to be doing weightlifting, power training like plyometrics, sprints, and high intensity interval training. And the last system to improve your biological power is the cardiovascular system. And the cool thing about the cardiovascular system is that if you've done all the other stuff, your cardiovascular system will be pretty good. Doing aerobic training is great for your cardiovascular system as your heart is a muscle and doing aerobic training is strengthening that muscle. 
And if you have a great diet and a great lifestyle, your cardiovascular system will be great. And that's what biological power is, what it consists of, and simple ways on how to improve it. Thanks for watching the video. I do plan on going more in depth on particular systems in future videos. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I recently made a video going over why you shouldn't only weightlift as your form of exercise, which you should check out.